And here we have an early Hemi truck. I'm gonna look and show you guys where the electronic throttle assembly is on these when you go to a salvage yard. We're actually gonna look under here. It may be hard to see at the moment. I'll go ahead and point it out. So up under the battery tray, which is right here, see. This is the front body control module and the fuse panel. If you're looking under here, that's that guy right there. That's the thing that you want to pull out for your Hemi swap. And the throttle assembly goes all the way over the fender well, down there, and back to the gas pedal. So that's okay, where you what we're going to be talking garage. about is the infamous 2003-2004 bell crank assembly for the Hemi swaps. Let's see, part number is 5303-2456AE. Uh, now, that actually changes a little bit. You may see some different part numbers. There are subtle differences, 03 and 04, but the 2003 and 2004 RAM is where you find this. This is just the casing. Um, what you're going to see inside are your two inserts where your bolts go through to the actual throttle position sensor. You're going to see this area right here, which is a detent that holds the tab for the return spring on the throttle position sensor. Here is where the throttle cable actually snaps into the housing assembly using a lock pin here. Um, and that's really all it is. What we want to do first is take your housing and look for the casing marks. It's um, in the molding process. There's um, a little die here you'll see uh, that circle right there. You're gonna drill that out uh, to make provisions for your kick down cable assembly. Now, what I use is a standard um, low car 904-727 kick down linkage uh, replacement. It's the cable. So it's a stainless steel sleeved cable with the aluminum ends where you can set your actual, your depth of uh, sleeve so you can really make some finite adjustments. What it comes with are several brackets and pieces that you'll be using on this. It's very easy, very straightforward. So let's kind of look a little bit more in detail at the actual throttle position sensor that's inside this box. So what you'll notice is, first of all, it's made by Mercedes-Benz. Uh, this part number that you'll see here cross-references to early 2000 Mercedes-Benz vehicles, uh, primarily SUVs, have this exact same sensor with a different style uh, throttle position linkage box. Um, so it won't look just like this guy, but it'll serve the same purpose, and it's really a firewall-mounted application that's very close so your configuration your box is maybe you know within the size of the palms of my hands um, it may suit you better uh, when you're junkyard crawling uh, if you cannot find a 2003 2004 box uh, please start looking in the import section see if you can find one of these out of an early mercedes-benz same thing uh, with the same resistance values uh, to give your throttle position sense um, in the hemi box the truck box you'll have this cam bracket that fits on the throttle position sensor and it slides in just in this way and the return coil spring wraps around here this um, extruded part and hooks around there uh, what you won't see is you will not see this hole uh, what I normally do is you go ahead and place this in the position and you drill a hole in the backside. Note this hole was drilled in correctly because it interferes with this edge of the throttle position sensor. You don't wanna do that. You wanna drill it a little bit higher. So what I actually recommend doing is leaving this in the box. For one, the coal spring, the return spring can be cumbersome to get back into position. Um, it really just, it, you have to hold your mouth just right to get it to go back in. So uh, I recommend leaving this in the box um, I really just wanted to show you where to drill the hole here, just so you know what we're talking about. But the best thing to do is leave this guy alone. Here's another uh, kick down lever assembly, and you can see um, this is our kick down linkage uh, replacement, the cable. The hole was drilled, and the 
cable sleeve was passed through with the end jam nuts holding it in place in there that's something you can do from the bottom side um, and it really doesn't make a difference you won't have to remove the two screws and get this out then turn this assembly over and drill your hole directly straight down like this so you'll be positive that you actually clear this section of the throttle position sensor that's something you really want to do uh, it'll make your life a heck of a lot easier here you can see this is the actual throttle cable that snaps onto this ball socket it's been removed for these purposes so what we're going to do is in the kit low card this is actually a low card knockoff uh, from ebay uh, it's really the same thing. It just doesn't have low car cast in the side. Uh, what you'll do is we'll run this through here. And we will place the end stop on, if I can get that in there. And often frayed sometimes you may want to use uh, electrical tape or um, masking tape to cover those frayed in so that you don't prick yourself and it makes it easier to get into the stop let's go ahead and see if we could slide this through and the set screw came out which is easy to lose that little guy's very easy to lose be careful with him just arbitrarily place it in this end stop just to hold its position. Okay. Pull it to its end. Feed the slat back out to the other side. And go ahead and place this end assembly in and lock it down with your lock nut with the nylon insert. Once you have that tightened down, you can go ahead and place the cable in on the ball socket. Make sure that's fed through. If it won't want to come down this end, no big deal. You can actually thread it off and force it through. There you are. No big deal. Let's slide it through here. Again, electrical tape if you need. Or spin it. And sometimes it'll go through. Perfect. Pull the sheath down here and reassemble that. I'll go ahead and do that off camera instead of wasting your time. Okay, that's pretty much it. You can trim this excess material here, tighten that down. As you can see, it fits within the confines of the box. When this mechanism rolls over, it hits the stop, which is right here. You have full travel of your kick down cable pulling from the inside. That's really all there is to it. Now what we'll do is we'll go underneath the vehicle and I'll show you how to hook this end up. I actually prefer this bracket. I'll show you where that goes. For the second portion of the install we're going to look at the transmission itself and you're going to see this is the kick down or pressure modifying lever and what its intent is to alter the internal case pressures during wide open throttle and partial throttle so partial throttle or uh, no throttle uh, zero percent it'll be you know kind of loose with no pull on it but as you go to wide open throttle this pressure modifying valve handle will rotate back all the way to it can no longer go so this is 100 percent this is zero percent. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a tab here underneath this bolt on the tail housing 
to retain the sleeve of our kick down cable. The cable internal wire will come over and attach to, you can see, there's a small hole right here in the kick down valve lever. So um, we're gonna go ahead and attach that and I will show you how to make sure you have it set properly. Here we are underneath the vehicle looking at the pressure modifier valve, the kick down assembly, some people call it. Uh, we have the end of the kick down threaded through that bolt hole. And going back to uh, tab on the tail case of the transmission coming out with our setting adjustment screw right here. So what you'll wanna do is make sure you have your setting with enough play. What I usually do is I'll run this all the way inward to give me the most amount of adjustment possible and uh, play with it from there. So here's how we actually test to see if it's functioning properly. Uh, we have the fill crank assembly. What we'll do is, I'm sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. We'll rotate it all the way until it hits the stop and at the same time check what's taking place up here to make sure it's fully actuating. So I'm going to do it here. You'll see it's moving all the way to the end. There you go. Your pressure modifier valve is moving all the way to travel and you are ready to ride. So what we'll do is mount this guy back up top side and go take this thing for a cruise.